gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Hello YouTube family, thank you for coming back to my channel That channel is Deb Chanel's 40s World, get into it Okay, I am just going to tell you all I am thankful, thankful, thankful for all your continued support All the support you show my channel and subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos. You guys have been doing a wonderful job, okay? Well, we're going to get into another must-see video. Okay, you know, I recap uh, Season 12, Episode 4 on Nene Leaks yesterday. And I tried to get to Kenya Moore and Portia, but time just ran out. And I had to get ready for my primary job, okay? I had to hit that clock. I had to go that 9 to 5. To keep ends meeting around him. You hear what I'm saying? And then I come do my YouTube in my extra time. That's my second job. It's for my supplemental income. So I appreciate y'all coming in, finding me uh, somewhat entertaining, and trying to get this stuff going on. But uh, yeah, we're going to go and talk about Miss Kenya Moore Daily on this video and how she surprised the hell out of me. This last episode and how she was acting. This child done got supposedly her heart destroyed. It has flatlined. Yes, this man we call Mark Daly, her husband. In one time, in one face, she says he's the greatest thing that ever happened to her. Then apple pie. Okay, well, I'm just saying from the south, that's what we eat. Chicken and apple pie down here, okay? But y'all know she's also dated. Walter, okay, and y'all know she dated Matt, and we all have our opinions and stories on those two relationships, trying to compare them uh, to Mark Daly, okay, now I'm just giving you that uh, synopsis, those similarities, and let y'all own make y'all own decisions and thoughts about that, but I'm just showing you the choice of men Kenya makes. And they're not ugly men she mess with. They're handsome. They are professional men. But yet, they don't put up with her shit. Okay? And one man, that Walter guy, he called her out on it. Went on B103 here in Atlanta. Spoke his piece, spoke his mind, and told Kenya was a fake and fraudulent woman. Those are my nice words I use for Kenya because, hey, she's on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and I do like to report on them, so I have to show love, okay? But when you acting like a spade, I have to call you out. But he had no love for Kenya more. He told into her like she was nobody's business, okay? Like she was yesterday news. And he, and somewhat, I was here for it because I'm like, Kenya, if you did that man like that, if you hired that man to try to play a role, now you know you ought to be a damn shame of yourself, okay? But that's all hearsay. He has his story. She has hers, okay? She said they were in a relationship. They were trying to get closer. This man said, uh-uh, it was nothing to the sort. <laughs> Kenya was a bully. She was trying to do this to him and that. And he's like, I'm a grown ass man. I know what I want. And I know it's not you. So he went on B103, told his story. And he hadn't heard nothing else from Kenya Moore since that day. And I think he's either married now to someone or he was engaged. I'm not really sure. But he wasn't finna put Mrs. to his last name to Kenya Moore. So that was for sure. Now, you know, we heard and saw. Everything transpired through television on how she did uh, Matt and how Matt did her. Now, I don't know if that was a scenario or you go act like a damn fool out there in the streets and we're going to record it and I'm going to give you some proceeds for helping me make a great storyline this, that, and third. I don't know, okay? Because Matt has definitely been in the news uh, calling himself putting hands on um, this other girlfriend out of Kenya, you know, I think he went through a couple of women after breaking up with her and, you know, it was some domestic type issues, allegedly. I mean, it was all on the news and whatnot, but I didn't follow it because I didn't care to, you know what I'm saying? To each his own out there. I try to stay legal with everything. I ain't got time to be messing with the law. All right. But anyway, so we know Kenya seems to be picking professional men, but yet they have issues. Some Rightfully so, because they definitely had their demeanor out there for the public to definitely take their opinions on and make their speculations. But one thing about Walter that got it out of her on B103, never heard anything bad from her. 
Nobody never got any arrest reports, any domestic violence reports. None of that. He's just a, a clean, squeaky type of guy. If you were looking for that information, which I don't do. Okay? I only report on what I hear out in the streets. I tell you my opinion and I move on. Okay? But when it comes to Mark Daly, we know through, you know, credible bloggers and uh, paparazzi type uh, people go out there and just research on people that have public records if they've done anything, like bought homes, bought cars, had bankruptcies, lost jobs, uh, made some criminal infractions, felonies, misdemeanors. You know, it's public records, so you can find all that if you want to pay the price and or uh, get into somebody's business that deep. Okay? For me, it's never that deep. But anyway, uh, Mike, I'm not Mike, Mark was supposedly have been a, a, a nice restauranteur up in New York. He owns Soko, some type of restaurant out there in New York, and it's been doing very well for him, and I guess he's trying to expand. I don't know if that's true, but we're just going to deal with the fact that we know he do have one restaurant up there in New York that's been in business for, we're going to say, over five years, okay? And I'm just speculating. I'm just throwing out numbers out there. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but he also has not had any uh, information blasted on him other than taxes not being paid for a couple of years or just one year. And what the Roman and streets are talking about, Kenya Moore is out there paying all that for the brother. So I don't know, okay? A millionaire here, a zillionaire there. Who gives a crap? Okay, we're just talking about stuff that interests us. So with that being said, um, there's no other information anybody that wanted to dig up on him is out there. Nothing's been said about no domestic violence, no abuse, whether it's verbal or physical against any other women, men, what have you. Um, there's no um, misdemeanors of any infractions done. He don't have any felonies. He don't have any misdemeanors. Probably don't even have a traffic ticket. So he's per se a quick, uh, what do you call it? A quick, what am I trying to say? A squeaky clean type of individual. I mean, he has no uh, priors. When I say priors, I'm talking legal terms. Like he hasn't committed a crime against some other human being. Uh, he's a, you know, a red, true-blooded American. You know, wants the American dream, does the American dream, and that's it. Now, I think he was maybe... Uh, had babies or he had a wife or something that allegedly uh, some people had found out and put it out there in social media but you know not really care if that it, that's really not my concern don't really care how many times he's been married don't care how many times he's been divorced my whole thing is is he treating his women right okay and if they have to uh, split up is it was it amicably you know was it everybody that was partaking in that relationship? Is everybody physically and mentally okay? Did we leave with all our faculties intact? Because money, uh, items such as materialistic stuff, they can be replaced. But when you get hurt in your head, physically, mentally, verbally abused, that goes with you through your lifetime. Okay? But anyway, to say that, to say this, never heard of Mark having anything thrown against him. Uh, for the negative. Now, even Kenya came out. Two year world or uh, world romance going on. In these two years, she got married. Well, she had a, a, a interesting short term relationship. She ended up getting married. She ended up giving uh, birth. Started her family unit. Everything was lovely. Nothing to be said. Everything is going on, going on like it ain't nothing but a good box of butter popcorn. Okay, like we finna sit in a movie and just partake and be happy and drink our sodas, get us some choo beads or some uh, raisinets and eat that popcorn and enjoy that movie of her life. Okay, that's what we were saying. She was saying all on social media, going to talk show platforms, you know, tossing Mike, I'm not Mike, uh, Mark up like he the best thing since sliced bread with butter. Okay, I'm like, I was there for her, I'm like, okay. But in my heart's a heart's I knew he was just faking fraudulently and just fooling everybody. That was a contractual agreement of a marriage, okay? Because I can't see her 
not wanting to invite everybody, including television, to definitely make everything known, okay, about her marriage. But if we want to play devil's advocate, we can say, okay, for the sake of it, Mark is not that type of guy. And he wanted this special moment just to be held for him and Kingdom. Okay? Understood. Moving on. They went into a year of this uh, so-called wedding, marriage, whatnot. Then baby Brooklyn came along. During that time, she was still confessing that he was this wonderful guy, this, that, and the third, whatever. Had baby girl. He's still a, a dutiful Great husband, provider, great uh, father, dad to Brooklyn, everything going kosher. Now, we come up after the Tamara Hall show. Oh, after that taping, we getting a divorce. We're separating. Those were the two things going on. Can you say on her half, I can't go on in a marriage such as this. So many underlying things that have been done, I cannot process and I cannot have in my life. I have to be gone. Mark saying a separation going on. So everybody's out there speculating. Well, he didn't say divorce, but she said divorce. Maybe they can't get back to camp. Uh, maybe there's hope. No, there's no hope. Da, 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 da. Going back and forth in social media, not knowing what to think. And Kenya is definitely coming out, trying to put her spin every time, everywhere she can get a spot. Well, somebody will interview her. Now, fast forward, we're into season 12. Okay, we've seen her. Uh, uh, one, two, three, and four. Okay. Now she got problems with Mog. Mog is this toxic human being. He's controlling. He's manipulative. Uh, she don't want her baby alone being around him because of what he says, how he makes her feel, and she is just looking at him like he's somebody new in her life that she don't even recognize. I'm like, girl, what is going on, Kenya? What is going on? And those, that is my question to you tonight. That's why I'm doing a recap, because the whole thing that you gave me in episode four of uh, last week's presentation of your actions and your demeanor to this man, you're pretty much saying this man need to be watched. You don't trust him around your daughter. He has no love for you, period. The magic has left the building on y'all whirlwind romance. You're not getting any many sexual pleasures. He's not treating you like the uh, queen that you say you are or he thought you were at the time prior to Brooklyn coming in the world. Uh, you're not getting in a long time with him. When you're in the bed together, Brooklyn is snug right between you all as a barrier, okay, of no cross zone. I mean, what are you saying? Are you trying to say he likes uh, the same sex, okay? Are you trying to give us that take on it? Or you're trying to paint him as this physical abuser. Or I would say physical, but mentally abusing you because of the things he don't say. And the things that he do say that you feel have crossed the line. Is he making you feel so low with your uh, self-esteem that is usually past the roof, up in the skies, has fallen down and, and shown itself beneath the ground? Okay, I'm not understanding. You're trying to paint this real horrific picture of this man a couple of months ago. You were singing his praises. I'm like, and then you got Poe Candy up in there. Why are you running to Candy? Talking about she knows all of Mark's ways. Girl, you ain't been married to him but two years. All right, and you're trying to compare your marriage to... Uh, Candy and Todd's marriage. Candy and Todd's marriage is like in five to seven years, boo. That ain't no uh, newlywed situation going over there. And they having their problems. Because I got to do a video on Candy. Because I want to know, Candy girl, what's going on over there at that Todd Tucker Burr's residence? Okay, I want to know, girl. Because you weren't too pleased when you were talking to Kenya. You were talking about 
Uh, yeah, me and Todd, we had a rough one year. <laughs> I'm like, baby girl, what was that rough year coming from? Because you sure made it seem like it was icing on the cake. You were skating on in your roller, roller derby boots going around that rink. Like, you were like, hey, oh, hey. Like, everything was cool, calm, and collected. Now, you got a story to tell us, boo, but I'll be on you. I got a video for you, too. All right, but going back to Miss Kenya, you are over at Ken, Candace's house trying to drop tea, trying to swap stories, trying to make us believe that you and Candace are like bosom buddies. I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, flag on play. When did Candy become your best buddy? You're trying to goop us and make us think that you and Candy have been hanging out so much, this, that, and the third. But I'm like, uh, no. Only reason why you're hanging out Maybe because Todd and Mark had some similarities together. They're in the same, pretty much age group maybe. And maybe they get down in the same likes and familiarity when it comes to certain things they like. Like maybe sports, like, uh, I don't know, a restaurant because the, he is somewhat the manager over uh the OLG establishment. I know you got your hands in and I know you got people watching Todd, okay? Because Todd ain't never there. Over at the OLG restaurant, the two that you have in establishing, uh, 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 establishment, I should say. Todd ain't never there. He up there with you, flying, taking a bus, taking a plane, taking a train, taking a ship, a boat. To wherever you at, he's just up in your ass so much to where he has to follow you to keep up with you and see and try to count your dollars that you uh get instead of him being at the OLG game doing his business, trying to make other business adventures for himself to bring in more money for the family. No, he out there chasing Candy. Now I don't know if that's a situation that Candy likes or she just putting up with for this time being. But yeah. I can see them having similarities and talking about the restaurant business because Mark is a restaurant owner. So I can see them having little, you know, talks and rubbing elbows together and, and, and um, far, what do you call it, forming a friendship. So is that the reason why you up Candy ass and you think Candy's supposed to know everything about your situation because she's been privy to some meetings and greetings because Todd and Mark have been hanging out. That's what I'm getting. Because, I, I mean, I know you say you like Kenya. Uh, and you wanted her back on the show this, that, and third. But, boom. I never seen y'all hugged up as much as y'all hugged up on this last episode. Okay? And it's been one, two, three. Four is really the kicker. Because one, two, three, she been over there with Cynthia Bailey. Trying to hang and be nosy. And she's even trying to rub... Uh, what do you call it? Elbows and kneecaps with uh Portia. Now I can see Portia hanging out with Kenya, and they having a little spiel talking about their husbands and their leering ways, where they're not happy because both of them were in social media. Kenya definitely got Mark out there, and we know Dennis been out there, you know, being unfavorable in the social media events. So they. Seems like they got trouble that they can share the things that they're going to. The only thing we could say, everybody married in this situation except for Portia. And that's another video I'm going to have to do on her behind. Because she's going around here acting like she's married, but she really a baby mama with drama. And brother got her over there uh, having sessions with a therapist. And that ain't even her husband. And, he ain't e and, and, and that ain't even his wife. I'm like, no, it don't make no sense, people. Make it make sense, because it don't. But getting back on Kenya, she's trying to make us feel like her and Kenya done solidified a strong friendship, and they've been hanging tight, like four fell at tires. And that's just not going to be. Everybody going to see through that shit. You just, I mean... You could tape with Cynthia, but Cynthia seems like she wants to tape uh, with Eva a lot. I don't know where that situation is going. But in the next episode, I'm looking at you 
Dog and Cynthia out. Now, you did dog her out, I think, the first two uh, coming back for you episodes. But you said like you finna dog her out pretty bad on this next episode, which is episode five. I don't know where y'all at, but it seems like y'all ain't happy and Cynthia trying to get in your behind or, or take up for herself, have a little backbone. But, uh, you know, I still got Cynthia with, you know, duct tape over her mouth sitting on the bench because... I, I don't know yet. I don't know if, if she could be released back into the, the uh, game or not. I'm working on it. I, I, I'm just I, I'm kind of confused with her right now. But I've seen you team up with Portia the first episode and uh, or Cynthia. And I've seen you team up with Cynthia the second, third episode. Now you're trying to say you teaming up with Candy. And Candy's your girl just because your man like his man. They have a lot in common. Now you're going to portray Candy as your girl. No, nah, I can't believe it. Won't believe it. Moving on. And next thing I'm talking about is, can you, why are you so unhappy? You don't praise this man to, even I got sick and wanted to uh, regurgitate on what you were saying about he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. He's with you, he's with the baby. But yet, there's no footage of you all skipping down the street, eating Skittles and ice cream or bonbons. There's no way, no footage of you being in SoCo restaurant, having dinner, or just in the ambiance of the whole environment of being at Mark's uh, place, even though if Mark is not even there or he's not being filmed, just over there showing us some things where you and Mark hang out, or y'all just hanging out in his apartment when you up there and y'all ain't going nowhere, okay? Or where's the footage when he's down here in Atlanta? Y'all going out, you know, for a night cup of coffee or, or, or to a movie or, or just having dinner. Hell, at the house. Where's the footage of that? If this is a so-called good relationship and he's good for you, good for your soul and good for the baby. But yet you're, you, you don't rush into this situation of a relationship, of a marriage, of a family. But you have no justification of the uh, lack of interest Mark is showing you. You're trying to build a scenario, but you don't went too far too fast. You don't even have that plot, that setting, because you did everything like one, two, three. And you, we didn't get to see any of it. We didn't get to see the marriage. We didn't get to see uh, the infertility, the uh, IVF process, the birthing. You gave us nothing, but yet you're trying to put all these pieces together like they're a puzzle and we got the puzzle, but the pieces you're trying to put in the puzzle, they don't match the puzzle. Like we working on a farm, we've got animals and then you got us working, you're trying to put some skyscraper uh, pieces into this puzzle when it's truly, as you can see, a farmland type of puzzle. So see, that's a uh, false right there, can you? That's not holding up. Then you go into some scenes uh, in episode one and two, and you show a little infraction on this past episode, episode four. You're making a scenario to where you're competing with a six or seven month year old. Okay, you're competing with your own daughter for the love of your so-called husband. OK, and we see very painfully he's choosing Brooklyn all day, every day, 365 days of the year, 24 seven. OK, when you're talking to him on the phone, he either's not answering, not picking up or it's very short. He's only interested in what baby Brooklyn is doing. The little footage we have of him being in your home, in your presence, in your environment, he's still not paying your attention. He is giving 100% his attention to his daughter, who's, what, six or seven months old. I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? And I'm scared for baby Brooklyn because I'm like, did your mama do you like this? Did you have to grow up in this same scenario to where your grandmama had to take you out that toxic relationship and raise you herself? Because maybe your dad, was giving you more attention than he was giving his wife, your mother? I don't know, Kenya. It's just not looking good, baby. And I don't like it that you're comparing yourself to your daughter at such a young age. What are you going to do to her when she's 14, 15 years old? What are you going to do with her when she's 21, 25? 
okay? And you're still not getting attention from her dad. Are you going to make her pay for his lackluster interest in you that he's paying more attention to his daughter? Girl, I'm telling you right now, seek counseling, okay? Seek counseling. Because there's only one queen, there's only one princess, and both of y'all can share the throne equally. And y'all can definitely share the husband. All right? And dad. He can be too, if he choose to be. But from the looks of it, from the part that you both are playing, are you kidding me? You shouldn't be nowhere in the same room with one another. Really? Okay? I'm just saying, I'm only going on the footage that I'm seeing. There's no love there. There's no communication there. There is nothing there. But you're trying to build up something to make this man really look like he's the scum of the earth. And I think that's so unfair, especially if he has nothing out there to say any different. Okay? Now, uh, my whole thing is interesting. You talked with Candy about you had spent your one-year anniversary or your two-year anniversary. Because, hell, we didn't hear about a one-year anniversary. And when you say anniversary, I like anniversary of what? The baby or, <laughs> or or when they met each other. Or, okay, you talking about wedding anniversary because I'm like, we didn't hear about the first wedding anniversary. They've been together for two years, so I'm guessing we're talking about the second anniversary. You took a trip by yourself. Because you got mad because Mark said he wanted to go on a trip. That was cool. He's glad for it. He's down for it. However, he don't want to, um, he don't want a nanny to come along. He want both of y'all to take care of the baby. Um, that's foolishness and fraudulent behavior on his part. Because, honey, when you don't have a baby and you don't been sold up with that baby, uh, day and night, night and day for at least a month, man, you be begging for somebody of a family whom you trust to come get that baby so you can have some down and a long time with yourself and with your spouse, <laughs> okay? So what he's doing, what you're saying, it just don't ma it doesn't match up with a real true union of a marriage, can you? And ain't nobody in their right mind gonna take a two-year anniversary trip with their daughter by themselves. I'm confused, Kenya. You're supposed to be with your husband, your man, your lover, your friend. Okay? Not your daughter. So, I don't know what's the trip prepaid for. And it was just going to be a waste. Hell, you could have like, gave it to your aunt. Say, go on, take this pretty trip to uh, Caicos or whatever it was. Turks and Caicos. Go on and take that trip, girl. Be blessed. Complimentary on me and Mark, because we ain't doing so well right now, but I don't want the trip to go to waste, so I want you to have it. Or you could let your cousin have the trip. There's no sense of you going on a trip by yourself. How stupid that, that, that look. And then, did you get it filmed for Bravo? I mean, if you're trying to make Mark seem like he's scum of the earth, let's do it with photographs. Let's do it with photography. Let's do it with some evidence, okay? But you didn't do that, okay? So that's another zero in your story that you know, keep poking holes at because it's not making sense. The whole story is not making sense at all. Then, recently, you were in social media. You don't flew to Paris with your baby girl for her birthday. Now, what six or seven month year old going to remember an experience unless you show pictures? And she's going to be like, ooh, I was pretty. I was a cute baby. Thank you, mama. I don't remember the trip, though. What did we do? <laughs> Girl, please, that was a hot mess. And I don't know where you're going with it, Kenya. Again, I don't know where you're going with it. Because it don't make no sense going to uh, Turcos and then going, calling yourself going to Paris. You're spending a lot of time by yourself. Then what you're trying to tell us that this guy named Mark is in so in love with you. You're so in love with him. But you're spending a uh, 99.9 .9 of your percent of your time not with him, okay? And you keep playing this game, talking about he's in New York, you are in Atlanta, uh, we got businesses, we can't be together. Girl, that, that's, don't even say that, okay? Because you make yourself look even more stupider, stupider than you looking right now, okay? So, again, if Mark is this lackluster of a husband, okay, He's not making he's not showing any passion towards you. 
you know, spoke and said he's toxic and you don't want that around your daughter. Kenya, my question, what is going on? What's truly, truly going on? I'd rather for you to come out and say, you know what, y'all? I made a mistake. I went too fast with this relationship. It's not working. I can't make it work. I can't do everything by myself. So I'm just going to let it go. And don't talk about it no more. Because, you know, if you tried to do it another way, we're going to ask for proof. We're going to ask for, well, was it really something? Or was it just something you thought up and put it in motion? And this is the ending result that we're getting. My whole thing with you, Kenya, just be yourself, baby. Everybody going to love you. Everybody going to appreciate you. And we're going to love the fundamentals that you give us as far as mindless drama. But to tear a man's credibility, a man down, just to sell a storyline, just to keep your ratings going up and to secure your spot on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, that's doing too much, okay? Because as this child grows, and we know you're going to keep her on TV because you love being on social media, and you don't made a channel for her, and you love flossing her, but it may come a time she's going to like, Mama, shut that damn thing down. I'm not getting on camera. You're not going to show me. Don't do that. You know, almost like invading her privacy like T.I. did to his daughter. That, you know, y'all see how that went out in social media. And that girl going to pay for it forever because it ain't going to go nowhere. It's just going to archive somewhere and people going to just be replaying it, re-talking about it, rehashing it. And you don't scar that child for life, T.I. I hope you know that. But anyway, moving on from there. Kenya, take, uh, uh, take a hint and look at what T.I. did. Do you want to do the same thing to your daughter? Do you want this to go down in history that you were jealous of your daughter because your supposedly husband had more love for her than he had for you? I mean, come on. You look like mom and dearest over here. You were looking like mom and dearest, girl. I'm trying to give you a full palm and collective reality check. Telling you to get it together. Because it ain't right. It ain't right for you to make a man look one way and things not going the way you want it to go because it's looking more negative on you. Now you're going to play the, a, a part where you're tearing this man's credibility down in public. And we haven't seen or heard any uh, negative stuff about him, but what you just been filtering out to us. But we don't have any evidence that he's mistreated his children. He's mistreated you. Uh, that he's this very mean and ugly and distasteful type of man because you know i can't blame him for not wanting to be on tv i cannot blame him. he told you that from the get-go that's not his life so i could see him having a little funky attitude because he didn't want to take so anything that he can make himself look bad he don't care because he said he didn't want to do it in the first place he didn't want to get into a world like this so i excuse him for acting all crazy and all this kind of thing i'm like honey if he real really loved you he would support you he would be on them cameras smiling, cheating, and everything else, hugging you, you know, being, you know, extra with you while showing a lot of more affectionate type of gestures and demeanors in his body language. Yes, he would be doing that. But, girl, you need to come clean, go on and get your so-called divorce, move on, and let's start another chapter and another storyline, okay? That's what I want for you, Kenya, because if I have to go watch Another five, six, seven, eight, or you tearing this man down, the reviews are not gonna be good for you. Because you you can have all this negative energy and this fortitude to go after women and call them everything under the sun and everything but a child of God. But you can't take up for yourself with this man. You gotta be all quiet and all insecure and all your self-esteem is so low we could just put a, 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 a shoe on top of it. Girl, please, you better come better than what you're doing. You team twirl, honey. If you can get up all in a, a female's face, you show sure damn sure can get in my face and tell him what you're going to uh, expect from him. If he can't do it, y'all don't want to go to council. Get yeah, in the marriage. You know what I'm saying? End it, honey. End it. Okay. But that's all I had to say about Kenya Moore on season 12 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta recap review on episode four. All right, y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about it, okay? I just, you know, my spirit wasn't sitting right for that whole episode. And like I said, I got two more women to go. <laughs> 
But y'all like and share my video, honey. Like I said, get out in the comments. I know y'all want to. Y'all do, honey. But I'm just trying to get y'all something to think about. Another viewpoint or perspective to look at this situation. Why are we sitting up here saying, yeah, 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 can you? Yeah, 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 tear Mark down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you tear Mark down, you're tearing that child's fathers down in the public eye. And that's not right what Kenya's doing. That's not right at all. You can't say this man on one hand is doing this, that, and the third. Hooray, hooray, hooray. And then on the other hand, you sitting up the same, but he not being a good husband to me. He's showing my our baby more interest than he's showing me. We ain't got no, you know, it's a part of an I, I, I situation. And that's bad too, Kenya. That's bad. So make up your mind, honey. Do you want to show the good part of Mark? Or you want to show the bad part of Mark? If you want to show the good part of Mark? Okay, fine. Have some new footage put out, okay? Or keep going to get off camera with him, all right? Going to get your divorce or whatever. You want to show the bad part of us, uh, bad part of Mark, I should say? Then think about your daughter. Think about what you're doing to her dad in public, especially if that's not the version she's seeing. She's not going to like it, Ken. She's not like it. She's not going to like it one bit. All right? Just telling you. And, you know, you're a new mom. I've been an old mom. Know about this stuff. Don't get into nothing uh, between a love, between a father and a daughter. Just like you wouldn't want nobody to get, uh, the dad to get into a love between a mother and a daughter. Okay? It's deep, honey. I know you didn't have a mother, but you had someone that treated you like a daughter. So you had love in your life. <laughs> Probably wasn't a mother love that you like, but somebody did love you like they you were their own. So get with it, can get back to your uh, old self? Because I'm not liking this uh, uh, self pity party you're having for yourself. Okay, like you're mentally being abused and all of this stuff. Uh uh, you got too much finesse. You got too much smarts about yourself. And hey, you just did a PSA on Cynthia's mom and other moms facing domestic violence and a physical and mental abuse. What kind of shit you got? You think you playing over here, can you? Girl, you better straighten up and fly right and do right by yourself and that child. Okay, you can only handle yourself and your own emotions. You can't deal with what Mark going through. You can't help him through that. You can support him if he needs your support or won't your support. Support. But what you showing us in this social media realm, he ain't and no. Mm -mm. No, babe. No. So get with it before I had to come back and do another part two on you. Well, part three on your behind. Okay? But that's all I had, guys. Y'all enjoy y'all selves in this video. Good night.